Hey everyone, I'm Ismail Kofi, um, CTO and co-founder. Louder! Okay, I'm gonna shout. <laughs> okay, again, hey, I'm Ismail Kofi, uh, co-founder and CTO of Celestia. Um, today I'm gonna talk about uh, what Celestia is and uh, currently what we're gonna launch with and how it might look into in the future. So like, I give a few future directions. Um, it's not a full-fledged roadmap, but it is like uh, a few ideas what we could work on moving forward. So uh, let's dive into the first part. Let me stand here, I guess. Uh, let's uh, dive into the first part. So I'll, for those who are not familiar with Celestia, I'll give like a very quick overview what it is and how it works and how we implemented it. Um, so from a very high level perspective, Celestia is the first modular blockchain network. And uh, the core idea is to decouple consensus from execution. What does this mean, right? Like every chain today uh, operates the following way. Like that's also true for all Cosmos chains roughly. Um, if, you, if you produce blocks, your clients validate the following, right? Like you validate uh, if the header has consensus and you also validate the transactions, like all of the transactions. So it's also true for all Cosmos chains in the sense that like, even if you like, uh, uh, launch like a Cosmosm zone, you just have more transactions to validate. Um, so this is what we call a monolithic blockchain because it does everything, right? Like it does all the tasks uh, a chain does. Uh, in, in Celestia, which we call like a, modul a modular blockchain, um, it operates slightly differently in the sense that headers are still validated, right? Um, you still validate if a header has consensus, right? But instead of validating all the transactions, you just validate if the transactions were actually published to the network and are available. So that you have a chance to recompute those, but um, the Celestia base layer doesn't do this. That's the main difference. Um, I'm standing in front of my slides. <laughs> so that's the main difference here, right? Um, what does it mean for the transactions to be available? It just means that they've been published. And because it doesn't validate if each transaction is, is, is valid from like a state machine perspective, these transactions can be arbitrary blobs of other applications, right? Um, you might wonder, if the transactions do not get executed and validated, where does the execution actually happen? Usually, like in a Cosmos zone, all the transactions get validated on the same chain. And if it's like a general purpose execution environment, you have like a Cosmosm zone or um, Evmos EVM zone, then the, um, the execution happens still on the same chain in like NVM. In the Celestia modular blockchain module, uh, model, the uh, execution happens usually in so-called rollups or sometimes called client-side execution. So while Celestia only guarantees that the uh, messages of the application have been uh, published and ordered and there's consensus on the order, the execution um, is done on a different chain in a so-called rollup that just posts the data for ordering and consensus to Celestia. So the execution happens there and the um, the, the, like the state validity is guaranteed either through fraud, state fraud proofs, or uh, so-called validity proofs. Um, so like a validity proof could be like a ZK proof, right? Um, these are like the two, two ways, um, the two main ways how execution works in Celestia. Um, these are the design principles that we design Celestia with. Um, I, I'm going to very quickly um, summarize those. So the block validity um, is done via available, like it's only checked if the data is available, right? That I already mentioned that. Um, two other main goals were that applications only need to care about their data, right? Like they only need to care about the data they need to execute in their rollup. They do not need to download any other data from any other application. This is different from like how Ethereum, for instance, currently works. In Ethereum, you download all the transaction data of all uh, Solidity smart contracts deployed on Ethereum. Um, additionally, one design goal was that you, you're able um, to like, prove that 
like for, to an application that you downloaded all the transactions, right? Um, nothing is missing from your application. And also that you only need to care to execute. I mean, you only download those that you care about. Like you only download those transactions, the data that you care about. So you also only have to execute the transactions of your application and nothing else. Again, that's very different from, like, for instance, Ethereum's world computer um, model, where all the um, where all the uh, state transitions are executed. It's also different from a Cosm a Cosm Wasm zone, where all the Cosm Wasm smart contracts are executed. So, how did we achieve this? Um, there's like mainly three ingredients we used to achieve this. Um, first of all, we erasure code the block data. Erasure coding is a technique that most of you are familiar with. When you scan a QR code, there's erasure coding implied. So like, if something is missing in the QR code, you still get to the website. If the CD is scratched, you can still listen to the music. That's erasure coding um, happening right there. Um, the other way is like how we like the other ingredient is how we commit to the data, and we commit to the data with a so-called namespace merkle tree, which is very similar to like how Tenement currently commits to the data. Um, I'll, I'll explain that uh, later. But like there's the third ingredient is data availability sampling. That basically like all these three things basically make a Cosmos uh, vanilla Cosmos chain to Celestia. So let's look a little bit into uh, the erasure coding, uh, not too much into detail. But um, so how it roughly works is you take the original block data, right? Like all the transactions in the block, and you arrange them in a square, um, chunking the, the data into like equally sized chunks. And then you extend the data uh, using that erasure coding um, three times, actually. And what you merkleize is not just the original data, like in Tenement uh, usually, but what you merkleize is like the whole extended data, the whole square, and you do it once with every row and with every column. So we had to swap out the uh, data root in, in the Tenement header. Um, so let's briefly look into how we commit to that data, right? Like I said, the rows and columns. Um, are, are merkleized using a namespace merkle tree. So the chunks are also prefixed with a namespace. And the namespace merkle tree takes um, the, the, the data sorted by namespace. And it also, I mean, as you can see here, it also um, basically separates each, like the data per namespace, right? So if you want to prove, for instance, the completeness of the data, you can download a namespace and you can prove to the left or to the right that uh, there's other, other namespaces involved. So you have proven completeness assuming that uh, the data was sorted, which is also guaranteed via consensus. Um, so speaking about data availability sampling, the third ingredient, um, that's the main, what's, what like the goal of Celestia is to, to uh, guarantee data availability. And this is done by this erasure coding that I mentioned. Here you can see uh, a, little bit more in, a little bit in more detail the, the chunks. Um, um, so how this, like how this works in, in, in practice is via the erasure coding, um, you only need to download a small portion of the block and have very high probabilistic guarantee that all the block data was actually available. So it's very hard for block producers to hide any data. So um, there's, there's some nuance here, but like roughly, if you download like only less than 1% of the data, you're almost 100% guaranteed that like all the block was published to the network. Um, that's what we call data availability sampling, because Light clients or nodes in Celestia sample randomly uh, the block data to assure that it was being published. So from a very high level architecture perspective, um, we took Tenement, we took a Cosmos SDK app, um, we built a state machine using that, right? You could imagine Celestia being a very simple proof of stake chain, the simplest you can imagine. Uh, we, we even like removed some of the base app modules. We simplified a few things. But we employed mostly the changes that I mentioned, which is 
validators commit to the erasure coded block and Merkleize it using the uh, namespace Merkle tree. So that happens in Celestia app, which is like a vanilla proof of stake app um, where the changes were employed. And the data availability sampling is done on a separate peer to peer network uh, using libp2p and bitswap mainly. So that's completely written from scratch. Like that part is, is very familiar to every, like, or like very similar to every Cosmos chain, just much simpler. And that part is completely new and never has been done before. Um, so we added one transaction type uh, to like base app essentially, which is uh, pay for blobs. You can imagine you, you submit a transaction, which is an arbitrary blob, and you pay per byte for that. And then Celestia goes, does the erasure coding, and guarantees that this has been published. And everyone can verify themselves, like with a very small client, that this, this is actually the case by employing that, um, that sampling that I mentioned before. OK, so to the more interesting part, to those who are uh, already familiar with Celestia, some future directions and open problems. Um, as I said, this is not a full-fledged roadmap, but a few directions that might be like prioritized moving forward. So first of all, um, how is it guaranteed that the erasure coding and the merkleization is done correctly? Right? Like, as you remember, um, nodes only download the data that they care about. How do you guarantee that the erasure coding has, has been done correctly? So what we currently do, like what we're going to launch with, is the, um, the um, light clients can rely on something that is called bad encoding fraud proof. Everyone who downloads like a, a, whole, a whole row or column can generate these bad encoding fraud proofs by like, looking at the rows and columns, matching those to the, uh, to the, to the uh, Merkle like to the Merkle tree of that row or column and then send around the proof that they do not actually match to what like, consensus agreed on, or that the data actually, um, 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 yeah, that the data is actually different, or like there's no integrity in the block. Um, this is important because rollups, the only thing we guarantee, as I said, is that rollups can post the data, and they can download the data um, to recompute their state, right? Um, and this bad encoding fraud proof guarantees that by uh, ensuring that not like the validator set didn't just commit to garbage or something. Um, the bad encoding fraud proofs have the downside that light clients need to wait for them, right, for the block to be final. Uh, one way to get rid of that is using so-called KZG commitments. Uh, that's, for instance, what Polygon Avail is doing, and um, Ethereum was also eyeballing with. And I think we can actually do better than that by, um, by instead now, we continue as before, essentially, but we compute like a, 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 a zero knowledge proof that the erasure coding and the construction of the uh, block and the commitment has been done correctly. That has like many benefits because the, um, uh, the computation before is still very fast and easy. And uh, you can send around a small proof immediately after the prover is done. You can send around a small proof. And you have immediate finality and do not need to wait for a bad encoding fraud proof. Um, another thing that we will most likely uh, need to prioritize, or the community will ask for, I'm sure, is uh, having a two-way bridge directly from and to Celestia to get the base layer tokens in and out to roll ups and back. Why this is relevant is then with that, um, if, if you had that bridge, you could uh, deploy a roll up and use the base layer token um, for gas consumption, right? You don't need your own token if you don't want to. And um, you have to use uh, the base layer token to pay for the blobs anyways. So it just makes sense. It will feel more natural if there was a two-way bridge to get the tokens in and out. The problem with that is that we want to keep the base layer as minimalistic as possible, right? Like I mentioned, um, Applications just post their data. There's no execution environment, and there's no 
general purpose execution environment such that you could like host a bridge there um, for all the different kind of execution environments that deploy their applications on top of Celestia, and that could be very different. So for each of those, if you need a bridge, you would need to have uh, an execution environment running on Celestia. The question is, can we do without that? And thanks to um, an idea that Mustafa came up with, and thanks to uh, ZK Snarks, um, it is actually possible. Like the high level idea, without, again, without going into detail, because any of this could be a, a 20, 30 minutes talk of their own. The high level idea is if you look at how a ZK Snark verifier operates, it's basically very similar to the plain old signature, cryptographic signature verification. So, what if we took the public key of uh, 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 like, uh, such a verifier? And we used that as a specific address on Celestia. And then the user flow would roughly look as follows. So to get, to get um, TIA out, or like the base layer token, let's call it TIA. Let's, if you want to get that out of Celestia, you send a deposit transaction to that public key of the ZK Snark uh, verifier, right? Like let's call it verification key address. Once that's done, you credit uh, the user with Tia on the rollup. And yeah, that's, that's very easy, no magic. Uh, it's basically like an escrow. It's just that the, the public key that you send the tokens to are, um, um, yeah, are tied to, uh, uh, to a, a ZK verifier. So the way back is a little bit more nuanced. Here on the rollup, the user, very similar, sends a withdrawal transaction on here, uh, gets verified on the state machine, the transaction gets confirmed, and additionally, you generate uh, a ZK proof that this transaction actually happened, right? And then the magic is you use that ZK proof as like a kind of signature on Celestia, and then there is a, there's a, ver like the verifier runs on Celestia for like this, ZK proof, and then on Celestia, without having like a general purpose execution environment, you just have a verifier, right? Like, a, like an opcode. Um, you, you withdraw the tier back to the user. Um, there's a lot of nuance here. There's a lot of design decisions to be made. There's, um, that's the high level idea. It's very easy and very appealing. Um, if, you, if you're into working on ZK, stuff, please reach out um, or uh, participate on our research forum that I will bring up a little bit like at the end of the slides. Um, another hot topic that we need to tackle is MEV. Um, there's a lot of research going on. There's in the modular paradigm, there are a few more nuances because you have these like heterogeneous app, app layer on top. Um, so there's MEV in these rollups. There's MEV in the base layer, and then um, the, how do you how do you um, yeah how do you reason about these state of the art research in the context of that? Um, Skip is is looking into that, and like other projects as well. Uh, I think that's a that's a very um, yeah very interesting research field if you're into MEV. I would recommend to look into. Um, the early Celestia ecosystem and how to tackle MEV and how to improve uh, censorship resistance mainly because the rollups inherit the censorship resistance uh, of the base layer. Because, yeah. Um, okay. One more thing before I wrap it up. Um, the, the vision that we have is we want one gigabyte blocks, uh, one million rollups ideally or more, and 1 billion light nodes, right? You need a lot of light nodes to securely scale the block size. Um, and to achieve that, there's a lot of like, implementation that needs to happen, which is like optimization work, mainly on the peer-to-peer -peer layer. Um, so we currently uh, work, like Callum, my colleague, has an optimized mempool, uh, which is called content addressable mempool. Um, but there's still, like, to get to the goal of, like, at least a gigabyte blocks, there's still a lot to, op to be optimized in the mempool because it's not, th the tenement mempool is not meant for these, like, uh, block sizes. Similar on the Celestia node side, 
there's a lot of work to be done to improve DASing, um, like on the P2P layer and on the storage layer. For the 1 billion light nodes, an interesting target is the browser, obviously, because everyone runs a browser. People run wallets in their browser. People use Infura, Infura and like other uh, centralized service providers to interact with chains. But what they actually could do is they could all run a light node that is data availability sampling, have much higher security guarantees, and uh, like basically contribute to the security of the network. So if you want to work in in-browser data availability sampling light nodes, please reach out. There's roughly two ideas how to do this. One is to have a Rust client which compiles to Wasm, and then you, have, yeah, you, you, you deploy that in the browser. The other idea is to use the Go code and um, have a Wasm compile target. Go improved recently a lot on, um, on Wasm support. So that's a very appealing uh, approach here. OK, I'm going to skip this slide and go directly to, uh, to the links. And I move aside. If you want to participate on any of the ZK stuff, particularly or any of the researchy topic, I would recommend you to go to our research forum and post your ideas there. Uh, there's a QR code. If you want to work on any of the implementation specific stuff, if you're into peer-to-peer uh, -peer systems, networking, storage, databases, uh, our GitHub repositories are the right address. Please reach out. Thank you very much.